You've probably heard of how blue light can trigger the secretion of melatonin that tells your body to go to sleep. But did you know another component in your body that senses the same blue light in the morning and tells you to wake up? Today, I'm going to introduce this protein involved in your circadian rhythm, cryptochrome. The 2017 Nobel Prize in Physiology goes to the three scientists who crack the molecular mechanism of inner biological clock in plants, animals, and humans by studying Drosophila. Let me start with their major findings and the role of Drosophila cryptochrome in this mechanism. Now, we have two genes in the nucleus, period and timeless. Period gene produces period protein through mRNA transcription and protein translation, as usual. It is found that period protein accumulates in the cytoplasm during the night and go through degradation during the day. In fact, there's another protein both in the cytoplasm and nucleus that kills period protein by phosphorylation degradation, called double time. Wait, you might ask. How come the period protein still accumulate in the cytoplasm if there is a killer around? This is where timeless gene comes into play. The protein produced by timeless gene forms heterodimers with period protein to prevent degradation. So during the day, the period protein, together with its bodyguard timeless, stays and increases its amount in cytoplasm. When the night comes and accumulation reaches a certain level, Timeless will escort period protein into the nucleus. The heterodimer inhibits the transcription of both the period and timeless RNA, probably through direct binding to the promoter. And this is how your cells know it's time to take a rest. I apologize for the long background story, but finally, our Hollywood star Cryptochrome is going onto the stage to start a whole new day for your cells. In the morning, when the sun comes out, cryptochrome will sense the presence of light, specifically blue light, changes conformation, and eliminates all timeless protein. Now without the bodyguard, the poor period proteins are all exposed to the serial killer double time and die out eventually. Without the inhibition of the heterodimer, the period and timeless genes come back to life and start a new cycle of protein production, heterodimer formation, accumulation, migration to the nucleus, inhibition of the genes, and finally degradation by double time. If you didn't catch everything I just said, that's totally fine. After all, I presented more than 20 years research in two minutes. Here's all you need to know for this video. When hit by light, cryptochrome becomes active, changes its conformation, and degrades timeless which protects circadian protein needed for the day. Drosophila cryptochrome is composed of two identical subunits and has a line of global symmetry. It kind of looks like a butterfly, isn't it? With 1072 residues in total, the majority of the polypeptide chains fold into alpha helixes, surrounding one FAD cofactor, which is our old friend involved in electron transfer chain, in each subunit. This protein belongs to the cryptochrome slash photolyase family, which are photoreceptors that perform DNA repair or regulate growth and development in plants and animals. All proteins of this family share a chromophore binding photolyase homology domain, abbreviated as PHR, which allows the binding of FAD cofactor to harvest light. The PHR region consists of an N-terminal alpha-beta domain and a variable C-terminal helical tail with different functions. We'll take a closer look at the two domains in Drosophila right now. This picture compares the subunit of Drosophila cryptochrome and photolyase since they resemble the most. As we see, they have similar N-terminal regions, showing blue and purple, but cryptochrome has a more extended C-terminus, showing red in the left picture. The long C-terminus in cryptochrome positions at what would be the DNA binding pocket in photolyase. If we zoom in this region, we see one of the tryptophan residue also just into the same place. That's one major structural difference that distinguishes between the two. The protrusion motif, conservative in both proteins, constricts access to substrate binding cavity above FAD. Now, Let's talk about how light contributes to the conformational change we mentioned before, which helps degrade timeless protein. 
The general idea is that light excites electron movement to FAD, reducing it to anionic semiconductor, which is just FAD anionic radical. It induces conformational change that moves the C terminal tail away from the substrate binding site, the one that resembles DNA binding site in photolysis, and allow the binding of timeless. To recover, FAD semiconductor pass on the electrons to oxygen and form water. If we zoom in, in the FAD binding pocket, we see three tryptophan residues positioned in a triad shape. This is a classical e electron transport cascade found in many photoreduction proteins. Electrons are excited, going through trip 342, 397, 420, and eventually pass on to FAD. Interestingly, multiple cysteine residues that are located close to those tryptophan slow down the formation and decay of FAD semiconductor by perhaps stabilizing the trip plus radical via electron rich sulfur. The FAD semiconductor stays in its state in the presence of light and then reoxidizes back to FAD later when the night comes. The reoxidation of semiconductor is largely dependent on NO2, as experiments show significantly less recovery to FAD and longer decaying half time in anaerobic conditions. Another reason flies seem to breathe, huh? Otherwise, they probably have insomnia. After an overview of the cryptochrome structure, let me share some insights about its functions in terms of timeless degradation. First of all, I didn't tell you the whole story when I said cryptochrome degrade timeless by phosphorylation. There is actually another protein involved, called jet lag. Jet lag is an E3 ubiquitin ligase that adds a chain of ubiquitin to the target protein and marks for degradation by proteases. Here is again the full story with the addition of jet lag. Upon light exposure, cryptochrome undergoes conformational change, allowing it to bind timeless. Timeless is then modified by ph phosphorylation, which allows jet lag to target timeless for ubiquitination and rapid degradation by the proteasome pathway. Let's focus on the binding of cryptochrome to timeless. Unfortunately, the full protein structure of timeless remains unclear, but scientists were able to find a 10 residue segment in timeless, very similar to the C-terminal tail of cryptochrome. Experiments showed that the dark recovery of cryptochrome reduces its affinity to timeless. Additionally, when this complex is present as cryptochrome recovers, some interactions is maintained as semiconductor reoxidizes. This may indicate that the timeless binds in the place of cryptochrome C terminal tail when light hits upon and the tail moves away. The PDB cryptochrome structure also reveals positively and negatively charged residues in the surface of cryptochrome. When the tail was removed, cryptochrome becomes more extended because the tail contains acidic and basic residues that can disrupt the charged area interaction. Such extension is also proposed as a conformational change that reduces the steric, steric clash for the binding of timeless protein. Congratulations! Now you have the other piece of puzzle for the synchronizing effect of light on circadian rhythm. For each Drosophila circadian rhythm protein, there is human counterpart. Next time, when you wake up early from an intended late sleep, blame sunshine for it rather than your talking neighbors.